It's John Channel here over at Subscribestock and Mailbox. You mail me some comics. Don't mail me any of these SJW comics. So, um, buy Gay Green Lantern to own Comicsgate. If you really want to hand Comicsgate in L, DC Comics writer Tim Sheridan is begging followers to buy copies of the Green Lantern. It's going to go six issues, and somehow it will hand Comicsgate in L, and you'll own Comicsgate members. But he doesn't actually point out how. I guess that's a steel man, a straw man. Somehow you, you think Comicsgate is involved with Green Lantern? Or no, you think Comicsgate has an issue with, with gays in general? Why you think that? I'm not quite sure. But they have this straw man version of anyone who's vaguely right of center as it's like this it's just their whole mind is the Jesse Small this is MAGA country and then you look at the reality of it you're like yeah but that's a Jesse Small situation it's all fake it's all fake it's like everything is in your imagination you have to be marginalized and oppressed in your mind's eye it has to be right-wing republicans wearing red MAGA hats who are actually the ones who are ch chasing you down and beating the hell out of you but it's not. It never is. It never is. But in their mind's eye, it makes them feel better. It's like, oh, they're probably Charlottesville and J6 and MAGA hats and MAGA. It's like, you just, you're just you just delusional. It's 2023. You're not marginalized and oppressed if you're, you're chilling for billion-dollar DC comics. So this idiot, and he is, he just comes out and says, you need to buy the big gay comic book so you can own the Chad Hugo Boss in Comicsgate. How, where's the connection? I... I don't know. I, I, he does. He never explains why there's a connection. He says also that there's a huge market for these comics, and Comicsgate doesn't like it. So who's who's the public relations person for Comicsgate that's issuing, uh, you know, like talking points for CG? I, I don't know, and he doesn't know either. He just says Comicsgate won't like it if Gay Green Lantern sells really well. It's going for six issues and some variant covers. Yeah, that's a wise idea. And you need to people need to read this, so you need to buy extras and give it to friends who are need to come out of the closet. It's like it's twenty twenty three. If they're not out of the closet by now, they're 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 firmly happy in there with uh, Kanye West and uh, Tom Cruise and whoever else. Um, thing is, there's not actually a big market for these kind of comics. The, the Joe Glass, Mags Visaggio, Iceman, the Cena Grace guy, none of that stuff really sells. It's it's all for a very small market. And the second part is, Comicsgate doesn't care about your gay comics one way or the other. Right? Most straight people don't spend any time thinking about gay people, or even about being straight. Or you know, it's like that we don't buy the gay comics because we just can't identify with the gay relationship. Because 99% of people are probably not gay. No, you understand. Kids are like 40% queer or something growing up. No, they're just saying that to virtue signal. It's it's still like it always was. It's still probably 98% people are, are, are straight. And that's just, that's just the way of the world. No, no, no. I'm queer questioning like pan furry other kin. Yeah, but you're just saying that to get attention. Okay, you got me there. You got me there. Like, well, have you, have you had relations with somebody the same, you know, the same sex? No. Okay, then you're just doing it to get attention. Okay, okay, but I, I really need the attention because I really don't have anything else going for me. It's like, yeah, that's just your high school self-talking. Once you get out of high school, you're, you're just not going to care about all that kind of stuff. You're just going to be whoever you are, and you're going to learn that that's good enough. Um, so um, they make uh, videos. Like, Comscape might occasionally make videos. I don't think so much anymore because about these kind of like stereotypical America Chavez comics and Iceman and Scenic Grace and some of the comics that were out there. I don't know if the mainstream comics is doing that so much anymore or Comicsgate has just kind of moved on from there. Like comicsgate has been around for I think seven years now and to think that there's an anti comicsgate group out there is really kind of weird. Like just focus on selling your own thing. Comicsgate has moved on. It's weird that the anti comicsgate who's that Who's that, that kind of chubby girl who, who's a cosplayer? A lot of those people haven't moved on either. And it, it's weird because their Twitter accounts have haven't grown like they're all stuck at um like she's stuck at i forget her freaking name she's a chubby cosplayer she's stuck at like whatever her twitter account is it hasn't grown mags Visazios doesn't grow it's like the anti comics gate group really needed comics gate just like in the beginning comics gate needed sews to help put some oxygen in the fire but now comics gate is just doing just fine on its own they're selling you know cash grab and whatever else is is coming out there and the thing is, like, why would you think sales of a, a gay Green Lantern have anything to do with Comicsgate? How are the two related? 
Does he think Comicsgate cares if gay so- comics sell or not? Why on earth will Comicsgate care even about Marvel or DC at all? They're making their own comics, and Marvel and DC are not really putting out anything that people care about. And it does kind of strike me as weird when these people are shilling for DC Comics to go, oh, we need to get out there and support this comic. It's like, wait, wait, you need to support this billion-dollar comic book company, this billion-dollar industry, so people will think that they like gay comics and gay comics can sell, but... Here's If they were selling organically, they'd sell organically. It's this comic, uh, The Green Lantern, is not going to sell organically. And even with you shilling for it, it's not going to sell. And it's weird that you're shilling for it. If it was going to sell, just let it sell. It's not. No matter all you're shilling, like, come on, we're going to get out there and buy this. You're like, you're going to buy it for fair enough, five bucks. You're going to read it. You're not going to enjoy it. Or most likely, you're just not going to read it. It's just going to sit on your bookshelf for the next 10 years before you finally go, oh, I guess I can say, I guess I can kind of like give it passes, give this comic away or toss it or recycle it without feeling guilty. It's like it has to sit on the bookshelf for like 10 years. And that's probably what's going to happen with 90% of the people who buy it. They won't throw it out immediately because they're like, ah, I can't really, I got to kind of hold on to it for a little while. It's a virtue signal or something. So the success or failure of Green Lantern has nothing to do with Comicsgate whatsoever. The comic is, is going to be really bad and very low selling. And I was going to say it's going to get canceled after a dozen issues, but it's only going six issues with some variants. So it, it will it'd be interesting to watch. I think the first issue is is already out. Uh, we don't care about your mainstream comics. DC is a billion dollar company. It looks kind of weird that you're shilling for them. If gay comics were in demand, the numbers would be there and you wouldn't need to shill. They'd sell themselves. They're not in demand because nobody buys gay comics. And the, the open secret is not even the gays buy the gay comics. Because if they're buying comics at all, they're not buying the Pride or Vagrant Queen. They're buying Spider-Man and Batman. And that's the reality on the ground. Or, you know, some of them are buying Comics Gate also. And, or if you, I mean, there's no better time to write your own comic, to make your own comic, and, and to sell your own comic. It's like you have the tools are available for a very, very low uh, buy-in p- point to invest in making comics. And you look at what the mainstream is putting out there in terms of, like, the writer's strike on Hollywood. And this stuff is so crap. I was thinking about this. I was talking the other night. I was thinking, telling people, like, yeah, if your time is spent like worrying about the writer strike or watching some, I gotta have my shows on Netflix. Like you can, and Netflix just raised the price to like twenty three dollars a month or something. Like you can cancel all those things, sit down and write a story for the next couple of years. And you're like, but it's gonna suck. Yeah, yeah. For fair enough, your first story is gonna suck, but it's a better use of your time than watching a show on Netflix. Anyway, um, and the thing is, you never know. You might enjoy it. writing stories. Is is kind of a lot of fun. Mostly nobody's buying mainstream comics at all because it's usually all this annoying lectures about a very small subset of America or the world of, you know, the, the heavy identity politics with, with BLT stuff or a, a lecture on whatever's the current zeitgeist of the whatever Zephyr is flowing through the, the culture at the moment. Um, you know, the things that poke out, like the trans thing is popular for a minute and the refugees is popular. It's like whatever is popular, you're just going to lecture people on. And let me guess, all the bad people are going to have blonde or green eyes. Uh, well, yes, yes, that, that, yes. How, how, how did you know? I it must be a genius or I must, I must have read a thousand comics over the past three years where 99% of the bad guys have blue or green eyes. Okay, well, that's just a coincidence. No, that's not how math works. So I don't think I've heard Comicsy come out against the gays or for the gays or even care about the gays one way or the other. Why would this pussy think we care? I don't know, and he never explains. I personally don't care, and I haven't heard other people talk about these kind of comics or anything other than like just real mildly laugh at it. If you can sell um, Green Lantern, go for it. I hope. I hope... Yeah, I was gonna say I hope you make a million dollars, but you're not. You're selling for DC, so congratulations. And, and he goes, any residuals I'm getting, I'm donating to the Elton John charity for whatever. Okay, Good. more power to you, buddy. <laughs> it like gay comics aren't for me. It does. They're not for most people because we just don't understand that kind of like musical theater cliche stereotype type of stuff. But it doesn't hurt comics gate. All they have is this. I don't know if it's a straw man or a steel man where they have to have a a bad guy within comics gate to think like, oh, comics gate is really against this. That's just a Jesse Smollett situation. Every, most of this stuff is in your imagination. Or that EVS is some Hugo Boss leading a comic Waffen division and they're going to invade Poland. And then you look around at like five to seven years of videos of Comic Skate and you ask them like, well, where's the anti-gay stuff? And it doesn't exist. And they go, no, you understand. Myers and Mags Visaggio were, were arguing back and forth. Yeah, but were they arguing about Mags being gay? Or whoever else he was arguing about? Or were they arguing about stupid comics? 
oh, okay, but in our strongman version of the world, we can't stand on the merits of arguing the comics, so we have to we have to pretend that Myers was an EVS. We're talking about um, the person's like straightness or gayness, but like, but that's not what happened. That's not reality. And you know that, like deep down, you know that's not reality. And all the threats of violence, all the weird stuff, was coming from the anti comics gate group. Like various threats of actually deleting people were coming from the mainstream comic industry and the anti comics gate groups of people. All the threats, all the violence, all the weird stuff, all the tortious interference. Yeah, that was all anti comics gate. Comics gate just kind of kept their head down and kept selling comics and growing this, uh, growing this little, little, tiny little revolution. And it's weird that the left wing, it's like, don't you guys support the little businessman over the, uh, the billion dollar mainstream? Well, not when they're not when they're like, they're not on board the, uh, the narrative of whatever kind of globalist nonsense they're trying to sell at the moment. You know, so if it helps you sell, uh, you know, make DC some more money, uh, congratulations. No, people aren't terrified of a comic. It's just they're not going to buy it, and it just doesn't go beyond that. But in their mind, it has to be a big deal. It has to be this big, dramatic straw man. And you're looking around, so like, who in Comics Gate is, is kind of blowing this up? Nobody. I mean, it's like a few minutes video to talk about how weird these people are. And they are. They're like... They, they just so invested in these first world problems. Like, Comics friend, queer friends, allies, we need your help to make DC another, you know, $100,000 and to deliver Comicsgate a big L. But it doesn't have anything to, to do with Comicsgate. And you helping DC is just fucking pathetic. The whole thing is like, sell your own comic. Make, do something. Do something instead of shilling for a billion dollar industry. These people are so friggin' weird. Every time they say something weird about Comics Gate, it's just a straw man. It's like it's it's a big group of hundreds of thousands of people who are loosely in and out of Comics Gate. It, it is it is very big. It's like there's a core group of people who are actually paying money to to support the channels one way or another, but it is a big group. And like are there gonna be some outliers who have said politically incorrect things? Yeah, you're listening to one out of them right here. But it's like I don't represent Comics Gate. Nobody represents Comics Gate. There there's some big players in Comics Gate. EVS is probably the biggest player there. But it's like he represents EVS, and that's about as far as you can go. Otherwise, you're poisoning the well or reduction ad absurdium or whatever they call it. It's like you wouldn't want to do that with your group, would it? It's, well, it's not fair to do it to Comics Gate either, but it doesn't stop them from doing it because they're, you can dehumanize the people in Comics Gate for some reason because some of them are Christian and a lot of them are of European origin and, and they have blue and green eyes, so we can hate them. Like, no, you're just not, it's not, you really shouldn't be dehumanizing anyone. We're not dehumanizing you guys. Well, yeah, but you guys are, are the opposition, so you're not really human. You're like Untermensch or something. <laughs> Just funny. I think that came from comics. Uh, Superman, right? Anyway, so uh, there's a bunch of weirdos. They're just the deepest weirdos ever. And it, it's, you know, it's weird that, it's weird that like anti-comics gate is still a thing. Just let it go. Make your own comics. How, how well has, uh, how well is Mags Visaggio making their own comics and Joe Glass making their own comics? Well, they spent a lot of time fighting. They spent a lot of time on, on social media, I think, smoking weed. I, I hope, I'm not saying they smoke weed, but I mean, they, like, I shouldn't say that. But uh, they're talking about things that are just not important. Like, a lot of the mainstream comics people are talking about, like, sports teams and stuff or, or like, political stuff. And you realize, like, you know, uh, who is it? Michael Jordan said uh, Republicans buy tennis shoes also. Oh, yeah, but they're not human. We, we don't want to sell the Republicans. Well, that's, a, that's actually a big chunk of your market. I mean, if I was selling a comic, I'd want to sell to, to the to the gays, the, the Irish, the Russians, the blacks, the the the, the Italians, the whatever. I want to sell to everyone if I was selling comics. Why wouldn't you? Oh no, no no no! You understand? We have to have a purity test. We can't sell the we can't sell these Hugo Boss people. The EVS is the Hugo Boss character. Yes, yes, because of some Sinestro comic from ten years ago. You know that's like a joke, right? A simile, metaphor, uh, sarcasm, analogy, something, uh, hyperbole. Well, I don't know what you call it. Uh, the Sinestro character is like he's drawing an analogy to the uh, to the the Austrian corporal. It's it's a little bit of humor. It's a nod. It's a nod to a historical character being shown today. That's why the character works, right? Do you, do you like there's a big chunk of people who pretend not to get sarcasm. And and that was that was pre twenty sixteen pre Trump arrangement center before these people lost their effing minds and they did they really lost their minds they're like yeah yeah he's just joking pre twenty sixteen you wouldn't try to destroy somebody's life to destroy somebody's career for making a Sinestro comment post twenty sixteen all those people had to get out of the mainstream industry Mike Miller he's Christian 
Japanese, I think, but he's, I hope he's Japanese. I hope, but he's, he's Christian, so he's not welcome in the industry anymore. He can't have his religious beliefs and be in the mainstream. Doug Tenaple is Christian, not, not welcome in the industry. Uh, EVS is, you know, vaguely a milk toast conservative Republican, but he's got a sense of humor. Oh, yeah, not, he's a hostile work environment, not welcome in D.C. anymore. Like, oh, that's, aren't you guys kind of the intolerant ones? Hey, listen, if, if you're gay, um, I, I'm, you can, you can be in comics gay. It's to whatever power I have to invite you. Uh, whatever you, your color you are, as long as you're not an SJW, uh, go join Comicsgate. Join join the network. Uh, you can you'll probably be able to do interviews with almost anyone as, as long as you're not an SJW because SJWs screw everything up. You have to gatekeep SJWs. Like there is already an SJW industry. It's called Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and Image. That's Comicsgate is a response to that. It's like, yeah, with all these misinterest anti-white comics. We're trying to get away from that. Oh, cool. Well, there's this whole industry propped up and it's like a, a five million dollar industry oh cool the, the little guy yeah we should support the oh no they're hugo boss yeah all the comics gate guys are all all hugo boss anyway these these are just the weirdest people on earth it, it's weird that this has continued on for so many years it's like just sell your own shit and don't worry about cg like comment subscribe send me some comics don't send me an sw comics it's just a waste of postage and i'll see you guys all next episode